This is Alice Rogers, Membership and Awards Specialist at the American Volleyball Coaches Association. This recruiting tip is brought to you by the North Country Region, an affiliate partner of the ABCA. This week's recruiting tip features highlights from the 2022 AVCA USAV Region Partners Women's College Recruiting Panel. Join us live on Wednesday, March 22, 2023 at 7 p.m. Eastern for this year's panel, featuring the latest advice from women's college volleyball coaches in every division. Prospective student athletes, their parents, club and high school coaches are all invited to attend. Can't attend live on March 22nd? All registrants will receive a link to the recording. Register today at avca.org slash USAV Women's panel dot HTML. Triple CAA, the California Community College athletic association there aren't any uh, specific academic requirements to be enrolled in the college anybody can enroll there are academic requirements for continued eligibility and participation um, an academic requirement has been raised this year to 2.3 gpa so you must have a 2.3 uh, to in order to be eligible the act is still something that is up in the air but i do encourage everyone to still take that uh, because some academic scholarships do require the ACT. Academic criteria for Division Three, to be honest, is all over the place. So you want to just go to the admissions page of you know, the institution that you might be interested in, check to see what their criteria are. The NCAA Eligibility Center sets the requirements for initial eligibility. So that in, in D2, that means you need to have 16 core courses with a core course GPA of 2.2. If you don't meet all of that criteria in Division II, you're what's called a partial qualifier, which means you are allowed to receive scholarship. You can practice with the team, but you cannot compete or travel um, to outside competition. There's a eligibility center that you have to meet a certain standard. It's a sliding scale, GPA, 16 core courses. If you are eligible in division one, if you're eligible by the NCAA eligibility center, most, not all, most division one schools will grant you admission into their university if you sign a scholarship. Um, if you're a non-scholarship athlete in division one, you have to meet at most universities um, regular admission standards for the university and the athletic department cannot help you. The coaches are not allowed to assist you in admission. And so if you're considering a walk-on position at a university, make sure that you're looking at a university that you will meet their uh, admission standards. Now with all CCCAA sports, there are no athletic scholarships awarded to any of our student athletes. There are other scholarships available. A misconception sometimes is NAI doesn't offer any scholarships. Some do, some don't. Uh, some are full scholarships, some are full tuitions, some are just room and board. So again, you have a variety. Some can be stacked with academic and athletic. Uh, no athletic scholarships available at our level. Pretty much all colleges, to my, no to my knowledge, in the D3 world will have kind of two branches of, D of monetary um, uh, contributions available, and that is merit-based aid and then need-based aid. We want them to just focus on being the best student they can be. Please know that sticker prices, especially at private schools, mean absolutely nothing. Okay? I have students on my roster that are here for $10,000 a year because they are great students um, from families that are high need. Um, I don't have anybody that pays anywhere near our sticker prices.
we are maxed out at eight equivalencies per school. Um, an equivalency means basically the dollar amount has to add up to what eight full scholarships would cost. They can be spread out between as many student athletes as the coach wants. It's also important to note that academic merit awards and need-based financial aid does not count towards that. So you can actually have a, a lot of scholarship opportunities at Division II schools. We have 12 scholarships. If you get any part of a scholarship in Division I, it is counted as a full scholarship. Most Division I schools are fully funded, but there are some that are not. There's nothing wrong with asking someone, is your school fully funded? You need to know what your child is getting into. Each university can also offer a cost of attendance supplement that is distributed throughout the semester, includes tuition, room, board fees, and books that is on top of the scholarship to basically it covers additional costs that would be incurred as a regular student traveling to and from school twice. There's a federal actually formula that is used to determine that. And each school's cost of attendance amount is different. I will talk to you any way I can, whether it's email or text message or even social media through uh, direct messaging. Email is always a great way to start, but I'm easy. Text, DMs, um, that's that's totally fine for me. I would love a, a phone call. There's not too many 17, 18 year olds that want to pick up the phone and cold call. If they do, power to them. That's a That's an impressive start. Communication straight up this is about relationships. Coaching and having your child go play for a university is about relationships. So the more that the coach can learn and know about your child or about you as a student athlete, the better the opportunity you will have and the better experience they will have at that university. Communication needs to be often it needs to be sincere. It needs to be real. Make sure the student athlete is doing the communication. We can tell when the parent writes the email for them. It kind of makes me a little bit hesitant to take them on my team, maybe coming all the way across the country if uh, they don't have the responsibility to take their future into their own hands. When it comes to emails, I want to hear from the student. And if that means it's got a couple of typos and it's written in 17 year old language, I prefer that over the polished like PhD stuff any day of the week because it's authentic. And, you know, your personality comes through how you write. And again, that's what we're recruiting. Not that I don't want to get to know the parents, but at the end of the day, it's, it's four years of the player that's becoming a member of our family. I think you should send video. Emailing us and telling us you touched 10 feet is a really nice thing to say. However, I want to know how high you play, not how high you can touch one time. The video is to entice me to go watch you in person. It's not to make a decision on. For me, as much video as I can, I utilize as much as I can because I don't have the recruiting budget that many of my colleagues here have. I want to see the skills that may bring me in to get, get myself into the gym with you so I can see you live. Like maybe just check with the coach, like what their preference is. Like some people like, you know what? I want a 20 minute game video because I want to see what character comes through between points. You know, like I want to see your sort of rotations. I want to see if you're high-fiving your setter or whatever, you know, all the intangible stuff. Others might be like, you know what? You got two minutes to sell me here. <laughs> so give me two minutes of highlight film that's it. Or give me two, three minutes of a skill session. We're not going to sit and give me a 60 minute video. Like you've got about two to three minutes to like reel me in. Um, the other piece is make sure that your, your, if you do a skills video, that it's done in the order that matches your position. So make sure that that's what your video is starting with, whatever is the priority in your position. Recruiting services can be great if you're willing to part with your dollars to get emails sent with videos. I think you can do everything a recruiting service does by making a YouTube channel and typing in coach's email address on your own, and we will get your information the same way. Make sure you give yourself a profile on University Athlete. Every coach out recruiting at these tournaments is using it. Get your information out there. Keep it updated.
We watch everything as coaches. We watch you walk into the gym. We watch you talk to your parents. We watch you talk to your coach. We watch you respond to your teammates. I'm watching two courts over to see if behavior changes, whether I'm on the court or a certain person is on the court or not. It's all about character. It's all about who you are as a person and who you are as a student and who you are as an athlete. And, you know, we get it all. So we want to know what we're going to get as coaches because it's a pretty big commitment. So there's great opportunity for everyone out there. You can find your place. But at the end of the day, like, is this the right fit for you as a person? Is this the right fit for you? Like, is this your home? Because really, essentially, that's what you're choosing. And if something would happen, that volleyball would be taken away. Can, are you still at a home that you want to be? Um, and it's so easy to get caught up into the scholarship piece and the glory of athletics. And, and don't get me wrong. It's an amazing amazing chapter of life, but really try to take that step back um, to just see the big picture and, and try to kind of put it in perspective. Explore all options. There are great opportunities everywhere. It's not just D2, D3, D1, NAIA, JCs. Everything can be the perfect fit for you if you just explore it. From, from my perspective as a retired coach, I wish you all the best and I hope you find your match. Don't forget, Register for the 2023 Women's College Coaches Recruiting Panel. Visit avca.org slash usavwomenspanel.html for the registration link. And that's your recruiting tip of the week. Thanks for your membership in the North Country region.